Well, we're leaving Lincoln National Park now. We're heading into Port Lincoln because that's the main road that takes you into Coffin Bay. And that is our next spot on the agenda. We'll go into the settlement of Coffin Bay and check it out. And then we will hit Coffin Bay National Park. And here's the main intersection that we went past yesterday. If we go left, we go back to that sleeper track that we were on. And we go right, and we all go obviously go into Port Lincoln. We're just pulling into the town of Coffin Bay. Township, town, village, we will see very soon. Caravan Central, holy guacamole. There's a lot of people. It's a busy location. That is. Just on an empty lot in town in Coffin Bay. Hello, little guy. There's one right here. Hi, Daddy. Hi, little ones. Well, Coffin Bay, the township wasn't so much to speak of. It was all revolved around fishing, basically. Recreational and commercial fishing. So we've gone through town and we are entering, as you can see, Coffin Bay National Park. Jill just had a look at the weather today. It's meant to go up to 33 today. 34. 34 today, so a warm one. What was tomorrow's high? 23. 23, what a difference. So obviously we got a front blowing through at some point. Those big, tall, vegetated dunes are very reminiscent of Lincoln National Park. We're on a little four-wheel drive track to a western beach called Ganya. Ganya Beach, yeah. Ganya Beach. Cool. It's one way in and one way out, but because it's 30 degrees out there, we decided, well, let's spend the day driving through the park and checking out the scenery, rather than sitting underneath of our awning getting cooked. And eaten by marsh flies. And eaten by marsh flies, yes. Those are pretty impressive sand dunes there, aren't they? They are up in front of us. <laughs> Soft sand ahead. Well, we've dropped our, t or I've dropped our tires down to 17 on the front and 17 on the rear. We can go lower if we have to. There's the start of the sand, right according to the map. And my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> How pretty is that? Woo wee! <laughs> That's gorgeous. It is. It's so stark. Doctor, my eyes. Cool. Big sandboarding area in the middle of this June field. Wish we had a sandboard. Do you really? <laughs> I'd probably skin half my skin off my body. Yeah. And eat the other half <laughs> of my weight in sand. Quick trip down and a long trip back up. <laughs> That's really pretty. That is very pretty. So stark. White, white sand against the blue, blue sky. Boy, if you didn't have these little poles to mark the track, you wouldn't really know where you're going, would you? Yeah, looks like people have come to grief here. Slid off the track. Darrow. Holy cow. You can see the sand blowing <laughs> off the top. Yeah. And a sand drift off the top of the one beside you as well. Yeah. I'm getting blasted with sand. Looks like we're getting close to the edge of the dune field towards the beach now. <laughs> so smooth of a track after driving those rocks on the way in. It really is. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Jinxed. Quite an extensive field of dunes. These ones here are a little bit more red than the ones we just crossed. This appears to be the track down under the beach. Wow, that is very, very pretty. Super pretty. 
Jill was just reading a sign saying that this was a sanctuary zone. The waters here are like nutrient rich, one of the most nutrient rich areas in Australia. So you get all sorts of critters. Got to get up off of the beach. Too easy. All right, we're heading back out that one way track. So cool driving through this stuff. And up the hill we go. Weird not having a sand flag. <laughs> it is, isn't it? got bogged on the other side of this one right there kind of like the color of a browned marshmallow it is isn't it <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking what does it remind me of a lightly toasted marshmallow yes the perfect marshmallow we're on the main track that heads to the point, the Coffin Bay Point. And I can't remember the name of that actual point. And the members of the 48 PSI Club have definitely been here. Because every time you hit a little soft section of sand, it's all these moguls. I try and run up on the edges of them where we can. But then you got the trees that you scrape into if you're cutting up too fine. It is a slow track. We're probably averaging, I don't know, 20 kilometers an hour. This is a bit more treed section. It is. This kind of reminds me of Fraser even a little bit. Yeah, we're heading inland now off that coastal yeah. stuff. The track has now swung inland on the peninsula, and it is all this hard limestone stuff. It is really slow going now. We're probably doing five to ten kilometers an hour. On the positive note, the 40 PSI club can't damage this. We're passing through a section with some salt marshes in the middle. And I'd say that's a massive breeding ground for midges and march flies. Apparently there's wild brumbies all through this park, but we haven't seen any. I haven't even seen horseshit on the track, which you normally see when there's brumbies around. We have seen emus and kangaroos. Yes, lots, lots of those guys. Ooh, a soft section. That's very pretty. And it looks like the track follows the beach for a little while. Oh, that's good. Although it is high tide. So that's bad. We'll make up some good time along here with that beach, if that's a beach run the whole way. So much smoother than what we were on. It is, isn't it? Is that a whale boat? Holy cow. Holy shit. Oh my god, that's huge. Have a look at the size of this bone. It's the head of a whale. And that's his scoopy bit. Like, check that out. I'm sitting inside this thing. It's friggin' massive. Well, Tear, what do you think? It's one massive whale bone. That's the front end of him. It's either the top jaw or the lower jaw. And that's, I don't know whether it's a baleen whale or a blue whale, but that's where they scoop the plankton. It is a big area for blue whales. Is it? I think so. Very cool. That's huge. <laughs> it's almost up to Jill's shoulders. It is up to Jill's shoulders. So we're running up this beach at the moment and it is stunning. Gentle little waves lapping the shore. That point over there is point long and we're heading out to the end of the promontory. Some pretty 
pretty serious sand hills. I think we drive by right in front of them. Yeah, I think you're right. Sand ridges come right up to the water. Look at that on high tide. The right tide to the bottom of the June. Right to the bottom of the June, yeah. We're on the beach, and there is an eagle here that's magnificent. Just beautiful. We're on the track to Point Sir Isaac, which is right near the very, very tip of the park. And we're going through this, it's like open woodland almost, open heath. And there's a sign. The landscape around you is littered with fallen trunks of old trees, a stark reminder of the Sheoak woodland. Prior to European settlement, the peninsula was covered in drooping Sheoak. There's some Sheoaks. Yep, sure is. We've just passed the pool campground and we're heading towards Point Sir Isaac. Just had to drop it into low range to get over to this, over this scrabbly crap. I can only see sky. <laughs> that's all I can see too. I'm sure that's all the camera's showing as well. Oh, the dead bug that splatted in front of it. It's showing that as well. 500 meters to Point Sir Isaac. What's the map say about Point Sir Isaac? Let's push the little icon button. Or for the more adventurous trip to Point Sir Isaac, at the tip of Coffin Bay Peninsula. A six hour return journey. Yeah, it's probably about there. right. Yeah, I think so. More scrabbly stuff. This is the first time we've had to drop it into low range anyway. It's been a rough track in, but not low range rough. Well, here we are, we made it to the tip of the Coffin Bay Peninsula at Point Sir Isaac. We're gonna head out on to the rocks at Point Sir Isaac at the very, very tip. Super cool. Point Sir Isaac. Look at all the birds. It's pretty smelly from all these seagulls, actually. Seagulls and seagulls and seagulls. That is all poop on the rocks. We're just leaving Sir Isaac's Point now, heading up this little four-wheel drive track back onto the land. Sir Isaac Point and now we're heading back in a I guess it'd be a southerly direction. Uh, we're coming down on the eastern side of the peninsula. Certainly don't know where we're going in terms of a destination but it's half past five and the temperature is starting to cool down out there. It, this is like well well past the time we would normally pull up but because it's so hot out there, we thought we'd just stay in the air-conditioned comfort of the car and pull up at camp a little bit later. So I'd say within the next two hours, we will be at camp. It'll still be daylight. You can see the track sort of disappearing off over the heathland and the big, big white sand dunes. 
that little sand dune off to our left. That's the beach that we ran along. Very cool. Look at that monster gibber on the on the left there. I'm amazed you knew the left. Uh, I didn't think about it. <laughs> Look at that one. Oh, it's like they've blocked that side trail. Oh yeah, I think you're right. I wasn't going to take it anyway. All right, we're coming up to what is called Misery Bay. Uh, Sensation Beach. Look at the moguls. decided not to camp along the beach here for a couple of reasons. One, we don't know how high the tide's going to come up, but it comes up a fair ways, judging by all this weed. And two, there's salt spray just absolutely pounding. It's probably, you probably can see the haze in the GoPro. There's a set of wheels in the sand that some poor unfortunate soul didn't make it. It's steep and it's it's, it's the moguls. It's going to be the killer because we got to hit it with speed to get up it. Mm -hmm. All right, hang on to your hat. I'm hanging. Oh, well, they smushed down pretty good. They did, didn't they? Yeah, they've had worse. Well, we've left our camp this morning over at Misery Bay, and we're heading back out of the park now. We just passed a sign that said the park boundary was 42 kilometers away. This is that same beach we ran up yesterday with the big whalebone on it, but it is low tide now, so it's a lot easier to run than what it was earlier. Very much cooler today as well. Last night, or yesterday, it topped out at about 34. Uh, this morning, what did we have, 18? And I think it's 18 right now, with a high of 22 or 24. The ocean's like glass. It is like glass, isn't it? Some pelicans out on a little island there, but it's right into the sun, so I don't know whether GoPro's gonna pick it up or not. And this is the pinch point on high tide where the water comes right up to the base of the dune. All good now.
we got about 10k or so to go to get out of the park. It's it's a bit of a mission to get in there. It's about 40 kilometers from the park gate to Sir Isaac Point, and you've got to be committed if you want to do it. Not a lot of people out here. We met four cars in total over the two days so far, which is good because there's about a billion blind corners on these tracks. I think you would be mad to tow in here. It's just too tight, too slow. You know, you probably got a six hour trip out to Sir Isaac Point without towing. I couldn't imagine what it would be like if you were towing. We're on a short dirt road to Coles Point, which is just south of Greenlee Beach. And I must say, it's one of the best dirt roads I've ever been on. This is what they call Coles Point, and directly across the water there, I'm not sure whether the GoPro can pick it up, is Sir Isaac Point, which is where we just were. We're sitting out at Coles Point for lunch, which is only a few kilometers from Greenlee Beach. Jill has a book in her hand, of course. We're sitting in the sunshine, which is beautiful, because it's kind of chilly out at the moment, isn't it, hon? That point there is Point Sir Isaac. That's where we were sitting out with the truck at the end of the point. And that beach there is that whalebone beach where we found that, I don't know, blue whale head or the whatever type of whale it was. So we're looking at Coffin Bay National Park all along there. Very cool. Standing out at the tip of Coal Point. Look at the color of that water. It's such a deep, deep, deep blue. Beautiful, unspoiled coastline. And that's where we're having our little luncheon picnic, up there on the top. There is Greenlee Beach. And you can see people camped along the top of the, I guess that's, I guess it's a dune or a cliff. And the rock pools are out there in that point that they speak about so much. We're not going to camp there today, it's just a little bit too early for us. We just finished lunch. So we're going to continue on our westward journey. We're at the Greenlee Beach Campground. Just came to come and have a quick check of it. And already I am not liking what I'm seeing. Lots of caravans, lots of trailers, lots of people. So if you tow, Maybe this is the place for you, but for Jill and I, no, this is not the place. Look at the caravans lined up, end on end on end. Look at them out there on the point too, there's lots. Yes, looking past this van out on that point, dozens. Pass, bye Greenlee. This is pretty along this little Puna Lane right near the Greenlee campground all these trees shading over top of the road. We pulled off to the side of the road at a place called Cummings Lookout and Cummings Monument. And we're just gonna go check it out here. Underneath. Scalloped underneath. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty big drop. Man, these cliffs are sensational. Lots of pieces broken off and fallen down. I asked Terry if he wanted to step out on this ledge, but he wasn't game to give it a try. Just come from Cummings Lookout, and this is Lake Hamilton in front of us, which is pretty cool. So we're, the highway is sandwiched between the ocean and this big ass salt lake. We are driving west toward Elliston, the scenery is really washed out. It's very dry and I think the combination of the dryness with the sunlight is sort of lulling Terry and I into a semi-coma. <laughs> We've split a bag of lollies already. It's a bit hard on the eyeballs. It really is. You even sound like a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty in a stark way. Yeah, if you're riding in a wagon out here, and looking to set up a homestead, you'd be mighty disappointed. <laughs> it's salt lakes that are half dry or all dry. 
would be a hard land. Pulled into a little lookout spot called Locks Well. And if you weren't paying attention, it goes shooting off into the ocean. Apparently it's a famous or popular salmon fishing beach. It's a bitumen road the whole way. Look at that, you can go into the ocean. Bye, Felicia. It's a cute little picnic area at this Locks Well. It's a serious set of stairs down to the beach. That is a lot of stairs. There's Jill at Locks Well. I wonder whether somebody has been fishing there. See, they've been going back and forth and back and forth with the footprints. We're camped up in a conservation park, which I can't remember the name of, but it starts with K. I'll throw it up on the screen, but have a look at that sunset. Ooh, that's the best one on the trip so far. Well, we've had a quiet little camp here in this conservation park. We're about 20k away from the coast, and it was a good little spot because it allowed me to do a service on the vehicle. That's all finished now, and we're ready to pack up and head back over to the coast, heading towards Talia Caves. We're on the Talia Caves Road, which runs for six kilometers off of the main highway. We're going back to check out the Talia Caves and surrounds. I like that bright, bright road and the dark, dark sky and the green trees. It's a pretty cool contrast. There's Talia Beach. There are tracks down on the beach, so yeah, it looks like you can get a vehicle down there. The surf is just pumping at the moment, and the salt spray is everywhere. Over there is the entrance to Talia Beach, and there's a few uh, caravans camped along there. In fact, there's caravans all along this sort of Talia Cliffs coastline. This one here is called the Monument. Erected to the memory of Esther Miller, who was accidentally drowned in this spot on the 24th of June, 1928. Perhaps doing a little bit of rock fishing maybe and got swept off by a wave? Who knows the story? This is the tub. And I can 100% understand why they call it the tub. There is a sign up that says there's a very aggressive King Brown down in that tub somewhere. There's a little set of stairs here where you can get down. I don't know whether I'm game to go down there, to be honest. Mr. King Brown can have the tub all to himself, I reckon. You can see Jill over there on the other side, so that gives you a little bit of a scale towards the size of this thing. It's freaking huge. And there's a little land bridge from the seaside to the tub side. It's all undercut all along this whole tub area. Very cool. What'd you think of the tub? That's really pretty. The <laughs> colors are pretty, the textures are pretty. Yeah. That is mega impressive. I would have gone down that ladder if it wasn't for that bloody King Brown sign. We are at the Woolshed Cave, which is a part of the Talia Cave complex. And we got a set of stairs that goes down to it. Cool. Less talking, more walking. My safety climbing thongs didn't let me down. <laughs> this is very, very cool. I know I keep saying that a lot, but it really is.